You ready to get in the Word? Yes. Hallelujah. We're talking about legacy. Uh, uh, last week, we kind of went a different direction, but I'm um, going to talk about, continue talking about legacy. Because whether you realize it or not, whether you believe it or not, you have a legacy. And it's not necessarily about the family you were born into, but it has everything to do with the kingdom you were born into. Say, I have a legacy. We are a heritage of faith. And faith is not all about me, me receiving, but my faith. If you look at Hebrews chapter 11, majority of all the things that you see by faith, through faith, in faith, everything had to do with them fulfilling their assignment. So yeah, our faith is to lay hold of every promise. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not making light of that, but also my faith is about, my faith is about being established in a faith is about me fulfilling my assignment and fulfilling his plan and his purpose for my life. Amen. You have a legacy. We have a legacy. Without, without going there, we, we talked about Psalms 127 and we talked about how, how as children, we are an arrow in the hand of the Lord. We're an arrow in the hand of the Lord. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 49. And today I'm going to deal with planted for purpose. Planted for purpose. Say that with me. Planted for purpose. Verse 1 says, listen, O coastlands, to me. And take heed, you people from afar. The word afar here is not necessarily talking about distance, but it's also talking about time. If you look this word up, it actually means a time, a time to come. So he's talking about not just their time, and he's not talking about just distant lands, but he's talking about in a time frame as in there's going to come a time that this is going to be necessary. And take heed, so take heed, so pay attention to this, give, give ear to this, listen to this, people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made, me men he has, he has made mention of my name, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. Say hidden me. Hidden me. Then it says, and made me a polished shaft. And that's talking about an arrow. Made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Hallelujah. Then it goes on and it says this. And he said to me, God said, and he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel. So this polished shaft, this arrow in the hand of God, a weapon or an instrument in the hand of God. This weapon, he's saying to them, you are my servant Israel. Israel just represents God's people. So you and I, as being children of God, we are a weapon in the hand of the Lord. And he says to them, you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified. Meaning it's what happens through your life, I'm gonna be glorified. So it's what happened through Vic and Joseph in Tanzania, God would be glorified. It's what God do, does through you in your business that he's going to be glorified. It's what God does through you as a, as a single mom or maybe an at-home an, an at mom. It's through you that he's going to be glorified. See, it's not about necessarily pulpit ministry, but it's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It doesn't matter what, 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 where your giftings are, your creativity is. All those things ultimately are all about being an instrument in the hand of God so he can be glorified. So don't limit yourself based on what you think your natural giftings or what your calling in the earth is. It's not about being a fivefold ministry gift, but it's about being a child of God. It's about being his you have a legacy. You have a legacy because you're a child of God. And it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter about your parents or, or how you grew up or what you might have recently been, been in. Knowing that you are a child of God, you have a legacy in the kingdom. Amen. 
And I believe there's a work on the inside of you that he's wanting to release. There's things on the inside of you that he wants to expand your capacity. He wants to expand your creativity. He wants to expand who you are because he has great things to do through your life. Amen. Then it says, then I said, I have labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing and really in vain to no purpose. Doesn't it, can it feel that way sometimes? Where I like, what am, why am I doing this? Why, why am I doing, why am I doing ministry? Why, no one, no one cares. Why, why do I continue to show up week after week? Why, why do I, why am I in the world? Why, who cares? You see, because that's what he's saying, because here, here, I, I'm supposed to be this, this polished arrow, but yet why am I doing all this? See, that's, the, that's what the enemy would love us to stay in. And because if, if that's the case, then what happens is we don't realize that he's hidden us for purpose. I've spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Then it says, yet, yet, surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work is with my God. Meaning even though in the natural, I don't feel, I feel empty. I feel like maybe my gift is, isn't being used or my gift isn't, doesn't matter. Yet, what does he say? My justice, that word justice is with God and my work is with God. It doesn't matter what other people may see. You need to know that you've got to be with God. You've got to be with God. So the whole point of being this hidden arrow that in his quiver, he's hidden me. But understanding that as he's hidden me, understanding he's the one that's going to bring about my destiny. He's the one that's going to bring about my purpose. Go to Psalms 92. Psalms 92. I'm planted for purpose. Say that I'm planted for purpose. Psalms 92, it says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He, the righteous, shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Now, you have to understand the trees, which in Texas, in this area of Texas, there's not a lot of tall ones. <laughs> Being from the East Coast, being from Maryland, we had some tall pine trees. I got here and they said, oh, I was like, what, what? I said, what kind of tree is, I said, what kind of bush is that? They're like, that's not a bush, that's a mesquite tree. I said, that's not a tree, that's a bush. But, but here it says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. But you know what? The palm tree had to start somewhere. The palm tree had to start as a seed. And often we, we, want to, we want to get born again and all of a sudden we want to be the palm tree yeah. when understanding that we've been planted for purpose. Yeah. <coughs> we've been planted for purpose. You've been planted for purpose. And, and it says, and, and you shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So it's interesting in the planting, the planting when we're planted, that's what gives us the ability to flourish. I think some of the biggest defeats people experience is they don't know what it means to be planted. And I'm not necessarily talking about being planted within just a church body, but I'm talking about being planted in God. I'm about being planted in God. Yeah, you need to be planted in a church. And that will help and aid in the flourishing process. You need to find out, you need to find what God's, where God's planted you. But, it's, but the thing is, is, there's no flourishing if there's no planting. Come on. Bless him, Lord. And people want to flourish, but they don't want to be planted. I have to be planted if I'm going to flourish. I have to stay planted if I'm going to flourish. 
Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Then it says they, who's they? Those that are planted. And it says they shall still, still, still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. The word fresh there means full of oil. Hallelujah, full of oil. So it's, it's in me being planted in God where I'm full of oil. Hallelujah. So we, 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 got, we got to stay hooked up with God if we're going to stay full of oil. I'm about you, but we need oil, don't we, Kyle? We, we, we need oil, don't we, Vic? Hallelujah. See, this is not a one-time thing. This is not just something we do on Sunday mornings, but this planting is something that we are every day of our lives as believers. Yes. I'm going to be fresh and I'm going to be flourishing. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, even in old age, I'll be 51 tomorrow. That's not old. <laughs> Hallelujah. 51 is the new 21, all right? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, I'll be like Joshua and Caleb. I'll be just as strong at 80 as I was at 40. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so you, you, they could say that. Why? Because out of, uh, they, they, they were the only two out of all of the million people that stayed hooked up with God. And they, they were only the two that went into the promised land. Because they stayed, what, planted. Planted. They stayed planted. They stayed planted. They stayed planted. They stayed planted. That's good. That's good. They stayed planted. Hallelujah. Fresh and flourishing. And then, then it says, why are, they, why, do they, why are they planted? Why will they still bring forth fruit? Why will they be fresh and flourishing? I love the next verse. It tells us why. To declare that the Lord is upright. Hallelujah. Why do we need to be fresh with oil? Because everywhere we go, we declare that my God is upright. My God is good. My God is faithful. My God's going to get you through. My God's going to bring you out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Planted. We are the arrow in the hand of the Lord. And it says that he conceals us and he's hidden us. But he didn't, he's not, he didn't hide us or keep us. And, and we'll use this word planted. He's concealed me. He's planted me with him. Because there's a purpose. So you can, you can receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Be a new creation. Go through, go through life just for, just for going after things that you may want to go after. And hey, you're born again, you're saved. But the thing is, is I don't want to leave this planet until I fulfill my purpose. Yes, that's good, There's an assignment on this church more than just to have church. There's an assignment on this church to be able to release the gifts in you and out of you to a world that's hurting. Jesus knew something about being planted. Jesus knew something about being planted. Go to John chapter 12. As we talk about being planted, being planted is about fulfilling God's plan for your life. That's legacy. Hallelujah. John chapter 12. Verse 23. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. That the Son of Man should be glorified. What did Isaiah say? That, that this would take place, that you are this polished shaft. Ultimately, what? That you would glorify God. So Jesus says, The hour has come. The time, the time for my legacy has come. The reason I, I am here, the time has, the culmination of this time has come. Next verse 24 says, Most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat 
falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Now think about that for a moment. Jesus knew something about being planted. Jesus knew something about being planted and, he, and he's telling them, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and dies, you are, whether you realize it or not, as a child of God, you are a seed in the earth. Jesus was a seed. For God so loved the world, he gave. For God so loved the world, he sowed his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. John 20 tells us, as my father sent me, so I send you. So, G so just as much, we could say this, for, for Jesus so loved the world, he sent you and me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. So he's telling them, how do you fulfill your assignment? How do you complete what God created you to do? He says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Amen. Amen. The word die, if you look this word up, it means to become rotten. It means to, it means to, the, and, and the thing is, is you think that is a, a negative thing, but for the seed, it is everything. Because it's not until, because this whole point of a seed being planted is all about transformation. You plant it one way, see, you plant an apple seed, and out of that apple seed, you get a tree, an apple tree. The seed looks nothing like the tree. And it's when that planting, so, so right now, you may not look like everything that, that you're going to look like at the end, but when you plant yourself and all of a sudden you die to your will, you die to what you want, and all of a sudden you allow God to transform you, then all of a sudden you, be some, you could be something that you could never be on your own. But all parts is dying as a seed saying, not my will be done, but your will be done in my life. Unless the seed die. Yes. But when that seed dies, see, and that the seed that's under the ground, you, you, can't, you can't see what's happening. You can't see what's happening. 32 years ago when I started, when I got born again and started coming to the church, coming, going to church and hearing the word of God, at that time, I couldn't, I couldn't see what I'm doing today. But over the period of time, all of a sudden, as I'm planted, as I'm planted in the word, I'm planted in his presence, I'm planted in the church, I'm planted around believers, I'm planted in what he's called me to do. All of a sudden, there's a transformation that starts taking place in my life. And all of a sudden, I start talking different, looking different, acting different. And all of a sudden, I'm being transformed from the inside out. And all of a sudden, I'm loving like I could never love before. I'm talking like I could never talk before. And all of a sudden, now, instead of me being a taker, now I'm a giver. Why? Because the the seed is planted. The seed is planted. And it's in that planting, transformation happens. Transformation happens. If it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You know, Jesus knew something about being planted. Yes, sir. yes he did. Hallelujah. I know Or Roberts preached years ago. There was a message he, he taught, and I heard Terry P Pearsons preach it when I went to EMIC 20 years ago, and, or 22 years ago, and it was, what you compromise to keep, you lose. How many times do we, have you done that? You're like, I got to hold on to this. I got to hold on to this. I got to hold on to this. And it's this one thing, but there's 20 things over here. And all of a sudden you lose the very thing you were trying to hold on to. And all of a sudden you neglected all of this. And so, so what we have to come to is like, I've got to hold to this. I, I've got to hold to him. I've got to stay planted in him. Now think about Jesus for a moment. Jesus was a man just like you and I. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. 
We see as a 12-year-old boy, we see that he is, he is in the father's house about the father's business. It said he grew in wisdom and favor with God, and he grew in that. That speaks of being planted. Luke 4 tells us, 18, it says, verse actually 16, he says this. He says, and he went into the synagogue, which was as his custom. Mm -hmm. This was his custom. As his custom. He went into the synagogue and it was his custom. And he stood up to read. If it's your custom, it's your habit. If it's your custom, you hold it as something valuable for your legacy. Jesus knew something about being planted. John 10 verse 30 says, I and the Father are one. John 14 tells us, you know, he goes, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So for 30 years, Jesus chose to be planted and it was in that planting, he experienced transformation. Verse 26, if anyone serves me. What is the, let me say, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. What is the dying that Jesus is referring to here? If a seed is planted and it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Jesus stepped into and fulfilled his legacy because he was planted, because he followed the Father. He followed the Father. If you keep reading, he says, for this hour I've come in, for this purpose I came into the world. Following. Following. I believe the dying that Jesus is referring to here is, will you follow? I believe it's our continual pursuit of following that we're transformed. And it's in that we bring forth much fruit. There's three things I wrote down about following. Following is the currency of discipleship. Let me say it again. Following is the currency of discipleship. If you don't follow, you're really not a disciple. Following Jesus will not bring you into a place of loss. These are things that I, I've learned about following. And following is about being planted. Planting is following and following is being planted. Following is the currency of discipleship. Following Jesus will never bring you into a place of lost, but it will bring you into a place of freedom, fruitfulness, and fulfillment. And the third thing I wrote down, following God is about being transformed into something I could never be on my own. What did Jesus tell the disciples in Matthew 4, 19? Just a couple of disciples. They're walking on the sea. What does he say? Follow me and I will what? Make you fishers of men. But the key was following. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Of men. I'll make you fishers of men. I'm, I'll make you. Meaning when you plant yourself next to me, when you plant yourself in me, I will make you a fisher. You've been fishing in the natural. You've been catching fish in the natural. And this has been your business for all uh, up to your, even your father. And, and this has been your legacy all this time. But I want you to know Jesus saying, you follow me and I'll make you. I will, I will make you. I will transform you into something where you won't just be catching fish. But all of a sudden now you're going to be catching humanity 
identity. I'm going to shift something on the inside of you. And where your legacy was a natural fisherman, I'm going to all of a sudden now transform you into being something that's going to make an impact in the world. It's interesting the word fisherman. If you look that word up in the Greek of fisherman, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. spelled like H-A-L-S-I-Y-O-O-S. But you know the root word for the word fisherman in the Greek is H-A-L-S. And you know what that word means? Salt. Salt. So the, the root Greek word to the word fisherman is salt. Mm. But this, I will make you the salt of the earth. I'll make you the salt of the earth. I will, I will make you something that's going to bring healing and preservation and life to everywhere you go. You know, not everyone that Jesus spoke, follow me, <laughs> followed. There's one saying, I bought a piece of land. I've got to go see that piece of land. One said, I've got to go bury my father. So not everyone that Jesus encountered where he says, follow me, did they say, I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow. Following following. If we're going to fulfill our legacy, if we're going to fulfill God's legacy, we have to be planted. But understand we're planted for a purpose. We're planted for a purpose. Thank you, Father. Say I'm planted for purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Being planted is about releasing what's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being planted is about, is, is preparation time. And it brings you into seasons of producing. We all want to produce great fruit, but do we welcome the planting and the preparation? Being planted is about preparation for the next season. And being, and being in a season of preparation is about releasing legacy. So why do we follow Go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Thank you, Father. Verse 39, he says, And, I, and he spoke a parable to them. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a ditch? So this is not about following, right? right? Who are you following? That's good. Following has everything to do with fulfilling your legacy. Yes. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Man. So Jesus followed the Father, and it's interesting that Jesus came, be, came to be just like the Father. Colossians 1 says that Jesus is the exact represent, Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible. And he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus stayed planted in the Father. And therefore, he became just like the Father. And here it says, if we follow that a disciple, when he's fully trained, when he's perfectly trained, when he's planted next to Jesus, then they're just like their teacher. Hallelujah. A lot of times we don't like planting because planting takes commitment. Planting takes faithfulness. 
planting will require you to change. This may not be a run around the room message. Teach him, man. Teach. But I'm telling you, this will cause you to step into what God's... I am here today because of what I'm teaching you today. I had, I had so many people tell me to go somewhere else besides Jerry Savelle Ministries. When the Lord said to come to Texas... And told me that everything I could, well, actually didn't tell me that yet, but he told me to go to Texas. And I came to Texas and, and, I was going to, and when I was going to Bible school, I came to Texas to go to Bible school. And I had people tell me, no, you need to go to Ramah. Ramah's a better school. You, you need to go to Ramah. You need to go to Ramah. Nothing against Ramah. I've learned a lot of amazing things from Kenneth Hagin. But that's not where I was to be planted. And people say, well, you can go here. Well, you know, couldn't, I had people say, why don't you just stay here and you can do correspondence school and then you can, then you can do ministry here in Maryland. Well, that sounds good, but it wouldn't be planted where I need to be planted. And if I didn't stick to, if I didn't stick to what God wanted me to do and I didn't stay planted, stay planted, then I wouldn't be here today. And trust me, when you, have an, when, you, when you know you have a calling on your life, the enemy's always going to try to get you to move around to try to find your assignment and so stay, stay planted and allow him to fulfill the assignment with where he's planted you. Amen. And it's easy in our time, day and age where people like to run in so many different places. And, and if that's where you're called to be, that's great. But the thing is, being planted will cause me to fulfill what he's called me to do. And sometimes it may be doing things that you don't want to do. Staying consistent with what you don't want to be consistent with. I was praying over this and, you know, and the Lord said, it's kind of like, we, we like the big, we like the grand, right? We like the, we like the big things. We like the big events. And I like big events too. And people like to celebrate the, 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 the apostle Peter standing up and preaching on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people get saved. I, I want that to happen through my life. How about you? Yes. Do you? Do you want to see that happen through your life? Do you, do you want to see people saved and born again through your life? And it's something we, we can celebrate, right? But sometimes we can get so enthralled in the big and all these things and, 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 and having all these, this big event or big platform, but then we don't really focus on the end of Acts chapter 2, where it said they continued in fellowship, in breaking of bread, in communion, in doctrine, going from house to house. See, we like to celebrate the big, but the church was established on all of it. It was established on the church. So I'm not discounting one over the other. But the issue is, is the fact is, is the thing is, is we have a, we have a legacy and that's going to have to, that comes to pass when we're planted. When we're planted. So I'm going to be planted. See, some people didn't like that too much. I, was like, uh, I like that first part, but I'm not sure about the other part. Being planted. Jesus told the disciples this in John 15, and he's talking to them. Really, I believe John 14, 15, 16 is all about preparing the church for when he departs. Yeah. And in John 15, first seven verses, you can go back and read it later. But what's the key component is if you abide in me and my word abides in you. Yeah. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So planting is everything to do with seeing and producing much fruit. Because he says, with me. Now, if it's, if it's without him, you can do nothing. What can you do with him? Everything. Everything. Go back to Isaiah 49, and I'll start to close with this.
being planted is about being with him. Hallelujah. Verse four, then I said, I have labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my reward is with the Lord and my work is with my God. Verse five, and now the Lord says. So this is the things that he was saying. Now the Lord says something. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, God says, it's too small of a thing that you should be my servant to just raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and preserve the ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So we are hidden and we're to be planted in him. He goes, it's too light of a thing if you would just bring back the, the, the people of Israel. He goes, that's too small. It's so much bigger. Okay, can you put that in the, um, in the message? It says, and to, and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. Oh, hold on, I'll wait for you to put it. It's too much for your servant. It says, God, Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One of Israel. Set, actually, go back to verse six. Hallelujah. Just to recover the tribes of Jacob, merely to round up the strays of Israel, I'm setting you up as a light for the nations so that my salvation becomes global. Think about that. Think about, you had 500 people see Jesus alive before the day of Pentecost. You had 120 that showed up that chose to be planted. And 120 people begin something that's still progressing today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The whole point, point of being planted and staying planted, and I'm not saying that this planting has to take 30 years. It can happen in a moment. I'm not trying to put some sort of time frame on it. I'm just saying that you and I in this day and age and what's happening in our world is we need to walk with God. We need to stay planted in his word. We need to stay planted in the, in, in the house. Amen. We need to stay planted in his presence. And it's in that, then he can then cause us to be a light to the nations. Let me close with this, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Because the whole point of being planted is for purpose. The whole purpose that he's talking there in, in, uh, in Isaiah 49 is staying close to God so he can release you into the world. Let's look at verse 42. It says, so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Man, that must have been an amazing message. <laughs> I don't think I've had anyone come back. Pastor, can you preach that message a second time? <laughs> and I probably should preach some messages more than once. But Again, I say to you, again, I say to you. And so when the Jews went out to the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. See, human nature a lot of times is like, tell us something new. Tell us something more. Tell us something different. Verse 43 says, Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44, On the next Sabbath... Almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. I want to see that happen. Think about that. I mean, the service was so amazing. You went out and told everyone that you got to come back and hear what that pastor 
Paul talked about or Pastor Barnabas talked about? Do people know where you go to church? <laughs> Hallelujah. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. In contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken to by Paul. Why did they oppose it? Because they were jealous. One thing you know about me, I'm not jealous of any church, any pastor. I'm going to do me. We're going to do what we're called to do. I'm not trying to be like anyone else. I'm not going to try to, hey, I'm going to be, we're going to be what God's created Heritage of Faith to be. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't, hey, start another church down the street. I don't care. I'm going to do, we're going to do what we're called to do. But what happens there is there's this, this competition that was going on and here. They were opposing everything. Why? Because they had more people than they had. Then Paul and Barnabas grew hold, grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. What's he doing? He's preaching Isaiah 49. He's preaching Isaiah 49 to them. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are, we are planted for purpose. We're planted for purpose. And each one of us, you have, we each have a legacy in God. Yes. And don't think of yourself as insignificant in any way. Amen. You may, don't, don't, put, don't ever put in front of how you refer to yourself, well, I'm just this. Well, I'm just a mechanic. I'm just a construction worker. I'm just someone that works, up a, work, works at a makeup counter. I'm just someone that I'm just a teacher. I'm just, a, I'm just an elementary school teacher. I'm just a waiter at a restaurant. I'm just this. No, you are a light to the nations. You're 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 a light to the nations. Hallelujah. Heritage of Faith has been planted in South Fort Worth and Crowley, Texas to fulfill what he's called us to do for such a time as this. And there's things that he has planted and the one th amazing thing about when you plant something, there's always a time of harvest. There's always a time of harvest. Hallelujah. There's always a time of harvest. And I believe in my spirit, I believe in my heart as the leader of this church, the pastor of this church, that we're stepping into a season where there's going to be a release of light and there's going to be a release of gifts and it's going to change our entire community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're planted for purpose. You're planted for purpose. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet.